Eight years have passed since the unsuccessful Achaean expedition to Mycia, and after detailed and extended military preparations, another meeting was scheduled at Aulis, the same place where the Achaean fleet had sailed from the first time. After taking the blame for rushing with the Trojan War and therefore defying the divine will, Agamemnon has now demonstrated willingness to appease the gods by any means necessary. According to Calchas, goddess Artemis was especially upset with the Mycenaean king and demanded no less than a human sacrifice. Agamemnon was a powerful man, the overlord of all of the Achaeans, but even he was a religious person, and there was nothing that could stop him from waging his long-desired war. What was about to happen would forever follow him and his royal house, bringing the everlasting curse to his family. Agamemnon's own daughter, Iphigenia, the princess of Mycenae, was brought to Aulis, killed and ritually sacrificed to the gods of Olympus. And the shock of everybody, especially Agamemnon's own wife and family, the great king of Mycenae proclaimed that the will of the gods was now fulfilled and that the war against Troy could finally begin. Final preparations were now underway and King Agamemnon had gathered contingents from every single corner of Greece. Great King's chief advisor was Nestor, the old and wise ruler of Pylos, with a fleet numbering 90 ships. Second in command of the Achaean forces was Idomeneus, the Basileus of Knossos, with Cretan navy, 80 ships strong. 80 ships were also assigned to Diomedes, an Argive prince and Basileus, in charge of the fleet, representing Argolis. Agamemnon's brother Menelaus led the Lacedaemonians of Laconia with 60 ships. Arcadians, being a mountainous landlocked area, had no fleet of their own. Their leader, Agapenor, was given 60 ships by Agamemnon himself. Athenians, led by Menestheus, had a 50 ship strong contingent. Same for the Boeotians, whose ships were bigger than the rest, each carrying a hundred and twenty men. After Thersander's death, the Boeotian forces were led by Penelaus, Latus, Arcesilaus, Prothonior, and Clonius, each commander having ten ships under his control. Among other contingents were the Epeans of Elis, Abantes of Euboea, Minians of Orchomenus, Phocians, Locrians, Aetolians, the men of Dulcion, the legendary Lapids of Aeolia, Magnetis of River Peneus and Mount Pelion, the island of Rhodes, led by Tlepomius, the son of Heracles, and the Salamanians, led by Ajax the Great, the Cephalanians, led by the crafty adventurer Odysseus, the king of Ithaca, and a great number of smaller contingents, led by various rulers and princes across all of Greece. The notable exception was King Cinyras of Cyprus, who despite promising 50 ships to Agamemnon, managed to send only one, commanded by his son, Magdalion. 
Achilles arrived at Aulis with a fleet of fifty ships, each carrying fifty myrmidons, elite Phtian soldiers renowned for unmatched skill and bravery. Achilles' five trusted commanders were Menestius, Eudorus, Pisander, Phoenix, and Alcimedon, each leader in charge of five hundred men. Agamemnon himself raised a personal fleet of one hundred ships containing the finest Mycenaean warriors, including his personal equity, and everything was slowly getting in place for the greatest fleet the world had ever seen. Over one thousand ships were being assembled and ready to sail towards the legendary city of Troy. On the other side, the Trojans were very well aware that the unavoidable conflict had been brought before them. King Priam was a wealthy man, and certainly not without support. Although the traditional Hittite allies were on the blink of collapse in central to western Anatolia, Troy still assembled a significant coalition of numerous allies. The Mycenaeans were led by Chromis and Anomus. Phrygians, which contributed the collapse of Hittite power in central Anatolia, were represented by Phorkis and Ascanius. Pelasgians, headed from the coastal city of Larissa, were under the command of brothers Hephaestus and Pelias. Pylamenes, Priam's relative, commanded the contingent from Paphlagonia, a coastal region of the northern Anatolia. Thracians, bounded by the Hellespont, were led by warlords Akamas and Peros. The Maeonians, later better known as Lydians, were commanded by Mastis and Antiphas. Further south, the Carians, which had by then achieved control of the city of Miletus, were led by Prince Nastes, while the Lycians were commanded by their king, Sarpedon. Besides the coastal cities and kingdoms of western Anatolia, a number of more distant allies pledged their support for the Trojan cause, such as Paeonians from the continental southeast Europe, the Halizonis, presumably from far coast of the Black Sea, and the far away located Ethiopians, led by their warrior king, Memnon. The Hittites, although in disarray and never explicitly mentioned in the Iliad, possibly had contingents set to the aid of Troy as well, but we'll get to that later. The Trojan army was under the supreme command of Prince Hector, son of Priam and heir to the throne of Ilion. It consisted of five divisions, each headed by the relatives of the Trojan royal house. The Dardanian contingent was commanded by Princess Aeneas, Archilochus and Achamas. The Trojan contingent of Mount Ida was under the command of Prince Pandarus. The other two divisions were led by Asius and Adrastus and Amphius, while the central army was under the direct authority from Hector himself. In 1194 BCE, the Grand Achaean fleet had swarmed the Aegean Sea and headed towards the shores of Ilion, marking the beginning of the most legendary war of all of antiquity. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Lecky, and Estate Care for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon member, please click the link in the video description. 
This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.